Hey, how y'all doing? My name is Brent Lewis. I am co-founder of Diversify Photo. I am also a photo editor of the New York Times. And I've been meaning to make this video for an extremely long time. Um, one of the things that myself and many other photo editors talk about back and forth are the moments that photographers go out and make amazing pictures. But the one thing that always hurts is when the photos come back with like no metadata, like none, nothing, no caption, no um, name of the photographer, just none of that jazz. So this is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. So, no time like the present. Um, so we're gonna start things off. This what you're seeing right now on screen. This is Photo Mechanic, uh, Cameron Britt's Photo Mechanic. I think this is the fifth version of it. They have six out now. Um, it is usually a program that costs, but for 90 days you can try it free. So we're gonna use that. This is like the industry standard way to go. Um, I've used it at the New York Times, The Washington Post, ESPN, The Denver Post, Chicago Tribune, The Chillicothe Gazette, um, name it. It's super industry standard. So this is what we're going to play with. Now some folks want to use Lightroom and Bridge, and we're making another video about that one later, but this is where we're going to start off. So, boom, if you hit Google, you type in photo mechanic, or you can go to home.camerabits.com. Um, it's really simple way to download it, just try for free and type in your email address, you get the free trial, you can download it, it's yours for like 90 days. I say if you can manage, buy a license to it, but for starting things off and just getting things rolling, it's a really good program to get used to throwing in your metadata. Um, outside of it just being great for editors on this side, it also just helps you keep track of your files and information in them and people and also helps you put your copyright information in there, so that's great. Um, so first things first, just you can easily open up um, a file. So you go like file, you can go to open your recents, open your contact sheets, new windows, things like that. Uh, usually I like to just take a folder from my desktop or wherever I'm at and then drop it in the photo mechanic and it pops up on the screen. This usually is filled with all the photos that you have. Um, right now it's just one because I'm just using the test folder. But when it comes to working on assignment, which is the way that I imagine a lot of people are going to use it. Um, it's a really cool process that I have like used before, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you that one. Um, so you get back from the sign, you're like, oof, cool. Amazing photos. Totally just knocked out the park. I'm brilliant. Um, you come back. You plug in your card. From here, you go into like File or Command-G, and you do Ingest. Ingest is amazing. Um, Cause you can pop in and usually you open this up. It's gonna have your disc. It's gonna have the primary destination that you want to go to. Um, it's gonna have your IPTC stationary pad, which we're gonna definitely get into that. That's where all the magic happens. Um, and then also you can like rename your adjusted photos as as well. And then you hit ingest. So uh, I don't have a disc in here right now, so we're gonna go ahead and just do ingest folder. So I have a folder in here that I'm using. And go to add. Um, and then here's my photo, my photos in it right there. Boom, we're open. Usually you're gonna have like your disk, so you can click on your disk, and then you can click on your, just click on your disk in general, whatever it is, your SD card, TF card, whatever it is, click on that, and then you just hit open. So now it's gonna pull from one folder. So let's tell it where to go. So you go into primary destination, boom, and I want it to go into that test folder I have over right now, so I have test. But other than that, you can throw it just about anywhere else. Uh, but I'm gonna put it in test folder. If you want a secondary destination, you can. It's really, really cool to do like that. Um, make sure you check your filter files that you know you have copy locked in on photos, copy raw and unraw photos. And this is where the magic actually happens. So make sure you click this button. Boom, so you apply your IPTC stationary pad to photos. Um, I like using the local, and then you click on to IPTC stationary pad, it opens up all of this. So this is what you're usually going to see. Um, and the photos that I have in there now are coming from a thing I did in Cuba, but let's just try to act like it was something we just did today. So this are the caption styles for the New York Times. Um, whoa, secretive. But um, the overall thing is this right here. So it's this template. So location, city, state, date, month, and then um, just the, the first sentences describing 
what is in the photo, who, from left to right, what's going on, and then second sentence you can use to give a little more context. Here's a really good example, um, Washington DC hyphen March 3rd, 14, 2013, Professor Simon Johnson of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Sloan School of Management, testifies, blah, blah, um, and then the credit goes to Jane Doe. So we're actually just gonna copy this, um, just to use an example. Uh, so let's go back to Photo Mechanic and click on the caption button. Um, so usually what you would do is you would type in whatever city that you're located in, wherever it took place. Um, I know what, let's just do it. I'm going to just do it for my own for right now. So let's just say it was Chicago, Illinois, the greatest city on the planet. Um, instead of March, it was just June 4th. That's when we're recording this video. June 4th, 2020. Um, and... Let's just kind of see. Let's make some things up. Um, I don't know. Um, Brent Lewis um, sits behind his computer screen uh, typing, uh, typing random words. Uh, boom. Always remember to spell check, which you can do. Control, click. It will give you options, boom, typing random words um, on, let's see, it would be, let me just go back and double check. I like to always put dates in mind again. Um, so type random words on June 4, 2020 in Chicago, Illinois. And then that's your first sentence. Second sentence is, um, Lewis decided at 12.30 a.m. to record a video to show folks how to caption and insert metadata in their photos. Boom, perfect second photo, second, um, second line. Cool, straight to the point, gave you who, what, when, where, or how. Um, and then boom, change the credit, and it should be Brent Lewis or, or hyphen, however you are. Uh, whatever the setup is at the organization that you're working for, the outlet you're working for, that's what you should be. And then you come over in the city, and this would put like Chicago, you put Illinois, and all different organizations have different ways of doing this, like sometimes they have different codes. Um, I remember at some places we had like categories and supplemental categories at the times and places now we really don't care too much about it, but check the sheets they send over to you, read everything. Um, the big one is always here. So photographer, you can always put your name in, um, title, that's up there. Um, when it comes to credit, this is where you always throw in. I like to put my name again every, once again, every organization, every outlet's completely different, but for the times it's like Brent Lewis for... The New York Times goes here. And you probably should do is just put Brent Lewis when it comes to copyright. Also, and then certain places have it. This is the source field. And at the New York Times, you have certain numbers that you put in here that correspond to your assignment. So you get like assignment email and there's numbers at the top of it that you throw into this. Um, so it's usually like, I think seven numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something like that. And then it's usually a letter at the end. Um, so put that in there. What that does is it allows folks in the back end to kind of see um, your photos when they come through. And it also like puts in a little folder, makes it all nice to me. You can find it in great. Um, also in there as well, some places use source, some places use uh, transmission reference over here as well. That's the thing. Um, and then always remember to like click on date. So all that's filled in, that's good to go. Hit close. Um, and the next big thing here is going to be renaming your photos because DC underscore seven, three, four, whatever it is, dot JPEG. It's not great. Um, so for me, it once again, always depends completely on what 
the outlet you're working for or how you want to name your files or anything like that. So the New York Times really doesn't matter, but I remember the Washington Post actually mattered because you had to have like the first seven digits of it. it had to be the ones from the email they sent you over or it wouldn't go into the system and you wouldn't get paid, this whole thing. Um, but usually at the times we just play it cool. So let's just call it, it'll just be like, oh, for, um, computer time, I don't know, let's call it computer. Um, use that, I like to put like a slug, cause you get like a slug at the top of the email, you have some idea what it's about. Um, and then you can do a hyphen and then just put your last name at it. Cool. Um, and then also set a sequence. So what a sequence is gonna do is it's gonna give you a set of numbers behind it. So if you didn't mark a sequence, everything would be named the same thing and they would just override it. So the sequence at least gives you ability to have one uh, zero through whatever you kind of want. Um, so I'm just gonna set it because it's only like seven photos in there. We're gonna set that for single values of zero one. Once all that looks good to go, just go ahead and hit ingest. Boom. All right, so this is definitely not Brent sitting behind a computer screen. This is actually missed photos of Misty Copeland in Cuba. Um, but yeah, this is what it will look like when things load up. So like, oh, cool. You can see your photos. Oh, that's in there. That's great. So close that back out again. Um, and so the big thing here, check, double check your metadata. Um, so in that first one, you usually put like a kind of broad stroke general caps and this kind of tells you what's going on. Um, but when you get to these, um, you're coming down granular and you're making like your decisions on what you're going to send through. Um, you're like, oh, cool. This is the photo that I want to send right, I don't know, here. I don't know. And actually, let's go this one. This is going to be easier to caption. And I'm like, all right, cool. So this is Misty Copeland and her husband in the back of a car. So I know exactly what I'm looking at. So I got my broad caption in there already, but now I'm going to make one specific for this. So I would say like Misty Copeland and her husband. Um, right. That take a late night ride in a convertible. Boom, done. Um, and then that one's ready to go. Capture in there is cool, it's good to go. All the information you did back there is in there. That's fine. And then from here, if you wanted to transmit, all you have to do is go up here and go over to usually most places do FTP. From here, you can easily just select all. If you're doing like a weed transfer or something like that, these photos completely can just drop into it. Um, most places use FTP. So let's talk about FTP really quick. So you come on down to FTP photos as, you click on that, and it's going to give you um, just options that you can do. I have the New York Times ones in here right now, but it's usually not that difficult to do. So we have the New York Times one in there, but we just went ahead and created a new connection. So what you do is you just go up to connections, boom, um, you click on new, you get a new setting. So let's just say, I don't know, the Brent Gazette. I don't know, make stuff up. Um, and so what you usually get on whatever they give you for information, to perhaps mid photos and like that, it's usually like um, FTP or server name and like that. So you usually just put like the FTP info in here and then whatever their login is and then whatever their password is. Um, so it's usually like 192 or something like that. I don't know. Um, I haven't used them in a very long time when it comes to uh, filing from this side. Um, but usually it's really simple to do. It's like HTTP, you put all the information in um, and then you hit OK. Boom, you saved it. Now it's a print gazette. If there's destination path, then you put the destination path in there. Um, and then you set it up where you are transmitting. So you have like original photos. Don't really save as JPEG. That becomes a whole other thing. I just send the original photos. If they are JPEG, send those. Boom, done. Um, and then also you can apply your stationary path, but you already did that when you ingest it. If you want to, if you want to go backwards into it, you can, this is the moment that you could apply a stationary path. I just like to know my photos. 
everything is good to go before I push the button on anything. Um, if you want to rename things, you can also rename them here the exact same way. Um, and I don't really like touching any of this other stuff um, just because I don't want to throw the photos off. The photos that I have right here, the photos I want to get through. And so what you can do, boom, you hit send. Um, it's not going to work right now, but when you do press in, this ingest tab is going to come up. Uh, it's going to be something like this ingest tab that's going to come up. It's going to show you the photos going through, and then you'll be done. Photos will be across, and that's the moment that you call your editor. It's like, hey, send those photos across. Did you get them? Um, just check to make sure that folks got them, especially in that first time out. Usually when you get to like time number three or four, it's completely fine. But that first time, just make sure they got across. Uh, yeah, so that's really the basics of everything um, when it comes to dealing with all uh, photo mechanic. This is a really, really amazing tool that I think you should play around with some more. We can go into this whole different, on a whole other day if you want to, but I really just want to nail down the ideals of getting that information, um, your metadata. Just capture information, city, state, country, where it's at, where it's located, what's going on in the photos, because what it's going to wind up doing at the end of the day is A, make sure that all the information is there. So whoever's on the other side of the computer screen is going to get that information, know what to do with it, and how to get it into print. Um, B, it's going to make whoever you're working with life a lot easier. Um, so they won't be going back and forth with you about what happened here, what happened there. Um, and the one thing that, I, that editors love is just ease. Um, just being able to throw someone an assignment and just know they're going to come back with the goods. That's what it's all about. Um, and just come back with the goods with capture information in there, everything they need. So all you have to do is just worry about the photos um, and maybe rewriting the captions if they need to be. So take all this information in. Um, let me know if you need anything at all. I'm here to help. Um, but just watch the, you watch the video, you got through everything, and just try it out. So go ahead and give um, Photo Mechanic a download, give it a spin, and then let's see what we can do um, later on. Maybe make another one about Lightroom. I am not the world's best at Lightroom, but I can give it a go. All right, so thank you all again for watching. And once again, if you have any questions, let me know. This is Brent Lewis with Diversify Photo. Thanks so much. And I guess have a good morning, good night. Thank you. We're here. All right, thanks again. Bye.